Hello. Following on from my recent GB3VA bomb video where I covered the story from way back in the early 90s about devices that were planted within range of a repeater to automatically key up and interfere with the repeater and how many of the devices were quite sophisticated and well put together. If you haven't seen that video please do so before or after you watch this one. In that video I commented that the as yet unknown perpetrators who made these, de these devices spent a lot of time and in some cases more than small change to make up sophisticated circuits. That could be made both small, low power, low cost, battery operated and cheap. Not something that was very easy back in the early 90s. With most repeaters back then an audible tone would have to be have been required in order for the repeater to open up so the device would have had to have at least that on board. Then a reliable and stable carrier would need to be generated. As affordable Chinese radios were not available back then, I would assume many devices would be either homemade, ex-mobile or police radio which were very cheap at the time. However, with the power levels and reliability I am thinking many devices would be modified hand portables. Uh, modern affordable Chinese radios now have everything you need including Vox to make this simple and very cheap to do. Now before we go on I want to make it 100% clear this video is not intended to encourage the misuse of the radio spectrum or anyone operating or enjoying the use of it. It is simply intended to show how simple disruption of this kind could be caused quite easily nowadays. But on the flip side of this, it's really to show how these simple devices can be used for super cheap fun projects to encourage children to the hobby or to make beacons or for fox hunting etc etc. Now this can be used with an amplifier and a loudspeaker to play tricks on friends and family and it is in this capacity I think where the most fun can be had. So please watch the video before you comment it's just a bit of fun. All of the devices are low power consumption and can easily be all run from a 7.2 volt supply, including the radio. So if someone were wanting to use this as a beacon or a DF uh, transmitter, they could easily operate this for many, many hours and also indefinitely using a solar USB backup if it is legal and they are licensed to do so in their country. For the radio transmitter, all you need for it is to be programmable and have a Vox facility voice activated. It is of course possible to switch the radio via a relay, but the Vox facility removes the requirement of this. Right, let's dive in. Hope you enjoy. This is probably one of the cheapest ways of doing it. I'm trying to uh, do this on the super cheap, remember. There may be smaller you know, units you can get. Obviously, they put things in playing cards and stuff, don't they, for recording messages, but... This is the uh, ISD1820 board, which a lot of like robot builders use uh, to produce, to record and reproduce sound using an Arduino. It has push buttons on the board, uh, so you can record your message by holding this button and then play. A momentary push of this one will play the message completely, and holding this one down will play it while you've got the button held down only. And there are various loop. You can get it to loop. You can get it to other sorts of things, but the the, the good thing with this is you can trigger these inputs, record, play, extended play loop, uh, with an external device. And so rather than going to code in and using an Arduino, which you know um, a lot of people haven't got access to, uh, I thought the easiest way to trigger the sound module to do this would be to use a timer, which I've got here. All right, this is the timer module. It's all uh, connected up because I've been testing it, playing around with it. This is a multi-function timer actually, there's loads of variants of these on uh, on eBay. I like this one particularly because it can be run off of USB and it's multi-mode and you don't need a trigger input, you can just set it to cycle on and off which for this purpose, for uh, for playing around, was all I wanted it for. So um, if you look on eBay there's tons and tons of these, there really isn't any point in you getting a soldier iron out and a 555 timer and messing around this day and age. I think this was four pounds delivered, something like that, with the display. So um, yeah, there's really no little point in doing that. So anyway, the, the very, very uh, easiest way of doing this, I thought, if you was going to have a bit of fun, mess around, would just simply be to use your bog standard UV5R now, or, or any radio with the uh, the mic input and the earphone input on the side there. So I just used an old audio cable, just cut the uh, the phono end off, 
and if you look online you'll see schematic diagrams for the pinouts of these so you know which ones are the you can work out which ones are the mic pins I'll put up a diagram of this anyway so um so yeah anyway so let's um, let's just all throw this together on the bench I'll just show you it working and like I said the you know this is not to <laughs> encourage people to go and do anything malicious or uh, silly with any of this kit it's really just fun application to show children perhaps you know um you know to get their tweak their interest uh and to uh you know and if you do have a genuine use for it and it's legal to do so in your country then of course <laughs> you're all right but i think you'll find in most countries it probably isn't legal right it's a very cheap speaker that you get with it but this is this is just a quick recording i did um, and I'll just play it back over here so you can see the quality you get with the included speaker. Okay, so not, not the best quality, but actually a little bit too much power to drive straight into the radios. So I rigged up a potentiometer in line with that and worked out that about a 4.2k resistor was needed in series with that. Just to uh, knock the uh, knock the edge off of it to make it uh, not overload the radio circuit. So let's show you the the whole thing connected up with the radios, and I'll quickly go through it, and you can see how it all works. The the timer has this mode where you can switch the output off, the output relay. So switch the output relay off, and then in theory to get this to work, all I need to do is to press the stop button, and uh, we should be in business. So We'll wait for it to count down from five. We should be on now. So there we go. That's the first transmission. And then it will drop because I said it just to play. And I can push that again to stop and it will go off. So there you go. That's how simple it is. Um, I'm going to put the lights back on. There we go. Time to adjust. And of course, you know, if you combine the something as tiny as the T1, which has the uh, has a, a different type of connector, but nonetheless, one you could uh, you could do that with. You could certainly pack all of that into a very. Uh, I'm going to turn these radios down that local interference you could certainly pack them all into something very small and compact and uh, like I say you could certainly have a lot of fun with that uh, obviously legally again I'm going to point that out so please I know some of the comments are going to be why are we showing people how to do this well my theory is with repeaters is the the fact that no one's going to bother messing with them because there's nobody on them so and of course if you you know an automated uh, as they back, as they used to back in the early you know in the sort of 80s and 90s when you did used to get a bit of this tomfoolery going on um, the there were lots of people on there to, to get annoyed by it and of course now there isn't so people wouldn't generally bother to do it so the main reason for doing this video was really just to show you following on from my repeater bomb video which people seem to like it was just to show you a modern day method that somebody uh, might use to do that but really I mean this sort of project could be used for a fun beacon you know for for fox hunting for DF in you know um, all manner of things so um, and obviously pranks playing pranks on your friends and like I said as long as it you you know it's it's legal to do so in your country this is all in the aid of in the name of science <laughs> right okay I think we'll leave it there for this one of course it could all go into a nice 3d printed box and everything but I'm not doing that because I'm not going to be using it for that. So uh, we just uh, we just put it on here just to show you what fun you can have. And I've got another project coming up with this where we're going to actually use this as a repeater. And uh, that's going to be good fun. So uh, stay tuned for that one.